my name is Emily. I am in my third year at U of T, um, majoring in philosophy and this program called Ethics, Society and Law, and also doing a minor in sociology. And I am the current secretary and board of stewards representative of the Hart House Art Committee. And I will talk more about what that means. Why did you decide to join the art committee? I think in high school, I was really disappointed by the fact that I wasn't a part of any art related clubs. And, you know, as someone who loves to patron the arts and visit art galleries and discuss artwork, but doesn't really, I, I'm not like a huge artist myself. I'm more of just like an enjoyer of art. I found, I found that the clubs that I could be a part of were sometimes really limited. And so the Hart House Art Committee for me was so great because it was an opportunity for me to be a part of a community who are really engaged with the arts and you know who are really passionate about the arts. Um, and so I could be a part of like event planning or like facilitating just the day to day life of the committee. Um, even though I might not be like the most artistically talented person so it was really great to be able to be a part of a student committee like that. What is your role at the art committee as the secretary you know i'm in charge of a lot of the logistical aspects of running the committee. So, you know, figuring out meeting dates, meeting minutes, organizing, uh, you know, back when it was in person, organizing like room bookings for events, like a lot of the logistical aspects. And then as a board of stewards representative, uh, you know, Hart House is um, a building that's a collection of many different student committees and organizations. And the board of stewards is kind of, um, a huge group of people who represent various aspects of the Hart House. And so, you know, I represent the art committee's interests there. I learn a lot about um, the other projects that Hart House is working on and able to relay that information to our committee and also just, you know, represent and explain what the Hart House Art Committee is doing to the larger bureaucracy. <laughs> What was high school like for you? Yeah, so I am from Calgary, Alberta. So, you know, pretty far from Toronto. And I attended um, Western Canada High School. And the high school was a very academically rigorous high school, I would say. You know, I was part of the International Baccalaureate program, um, doing like English. I was really passionate about English. So I did English IB, I did philosophy IB. But I would say that a lot of my high school career was definitely focused on my academics um, and less so my extracurriculars and less so the arts. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, in high school, I was definitely focused on getting into university, like, and, and definitely catered my attention towards my academics. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll talk about it more later, but it was a really nice transition to move into a big city um, and be able to explore a wider variety of things. What classes did you take in high school? Uh, one thing that I did really enjoy was I was able to take um, digital media as an option in high school, um, which, you know, I'm definitely no expert at Photoshop, but I was able to, you know, explore digital media and like doing art through Photoshop and creating websites and, and things like that. And I think graphic design is something that I'm still passionate about and something that I do a lot for like the other clubs that I'm a part of. I create a lot of promotional materials. And so that was definitely a very useful course that I took in high school. What extracurriculars did you do in high school? I was really interested in social justice committees um, in high school. So I was part of the Amnesty International Club. I was an exec on that for two years, for my last two years of high school. And so as a part of that, you know, we, we were able to participate with the Amnesty Calgary organization. And so we participated in Pride Parade with them. We did lots of Amnesty related functions and events at our school. Um, you know, lots of petition signing, lots of letter writing. And yeah, I, I would say I was mostly involved with them. Describe your transition from high school to university. So my transition into university was, I think, maybe a little bit smoother than most because I spent a lot of my final year of high school and the summer before university um, mapping out what I wanted my university life to look like. And so, you know, I was moving from Calgary, which is a smaller city, to Toronto, which is a huge city. And there was a lot of excitement with that. And I also was told by a lot of um, people who had gone on to university before me that, you know, university is filled with so many club opportunities, so many, you know, lecture series that you can attend, so many things, but you won't be able to take advantage of any of that if you don't plan it out and take initiative for yourself. And so I think what really allowed me to kind of 
fit into um, university, not right away, but, you know, slowly and steadily was the fact that, you know, over the summer, I was on the U of T club page, looking at what kinds of extracurriculars I would be interested in, you know, writing down people's emails and like contacting upper years saying like, hey, your committee sounds so cool. How can I get involved? And that just taking that extra bit of work just really facilitated a smooth transition. What difficulties did you face in your last year of high school? Exams were definitely a stressful time. I think they're always very stressful. One thing about just the end of grade 12, I would say that was unique was, you know, I already knew that I was going to go to U of T pretty early on in, in grade 12, um, thankfully. And so that alleviated a little bit of stress. But yeah, I think, you know, exam time was always stressful, especially because I was also taking like IB exams. Um, and so, you know, I really just kind of took that experience on as a really good preparation for what university finals would look like. What difficulties did you face in your transition from high school to university? I would say, I mean, I experienced this and I think many people, what they experience, especially when you're moving to a new city and you're living on your own, you know, without your parents for the first time. I think the one thing to get to really settle into in university is that nobody is checking up on you. Like you're, you're in charge of going to your classes, you're responsible for handing in that assignment and you don't have a teacher or a parent just constantly reminding you to do all of these things. So, you know, really, it took me a while to figure out how to plan my life, you know, how to get organized, how, what kind of calendar should I use? Like those types of things that I didn't have to worry as much about in high school because it's such a structured schedule were things that I definitely had to overcome in the beginnings of my university career, for sure. Is there anything you wish you did differently during your transition to university? In terms of advice, I would say this is something that a lot of people talk about. And so, you know, I'm probably being redundant and you've heard this a million times already, but I would really say go to your office hours. <laughs> this is something that I heard so many times before, you know, during frosh week, during orientation, people would say like, go to office hours. Your professors are just waiting in their, in their, offices waiting for students to come and I didn't take that advice in first year I really didn't um, like many others but then in second year I did start to go and just the enhanced experience that you have with your courses and with your professor was just really phenomenal you know having someone to constantly reach out to not just to talk about schoolwork but to talk about like internships grad school like you know, these, these professors have a lot of connections in the industry. And so you learn about so many opportunities through talking to the, the profs, the, the staff who exist at the university. So yeah, definitely just take advantage of that. I wish I did it more in my first year. What do you think about the art industry? Um, in terms of, you know, thinking about future, thinking about industries to enter, um, I have to say that I'm not maybe the most exemplary art student example. You know, I'm the type who did, am a little bit pragmatic, um, unfortunately, and am deciding to go to law school, <laughs> which, you know, is always an option. But one thing that I definitely have learned through, you know, working with the art committee, seeing, meeting a lot of people in the arts is that you can go into various career fields and have a connection to the arts. You know, like for example, there are arts and entertainment lawyers. There are lawyers that specialize just in representing artists and things of that nature. So, you know, there are so many ways to add a creative aspect of the arts to what might be seen as mundane work. And then there's also people who, you know, take that really brave leap and, and just pursue creative arts as a full-time job. And that's amazing. But there's also so many different industries that allow you to have a little bit of both. And so I think realizing that has been really encouraging and really helpful to planning my future. What high school experiences best prepared you for university? Something that was really valuable in high school for me was not related to visual arts, but just, you know, the humanities in general, I think I took, I was fortunate enough to go to a high school that offered um, philosophy as an option. And so, you know, philosophy courses are typically not very popular. Um, you know, it's not something that people go into to get a secure job after university, but just exploring that in high school and being exposed to a teacher who is so passionate about uh, philosophical writing and thinking. Um, 
allowed me to kind of take that leap of faith and do a philosophy major. And so, you know, what I've really learned is that in the arts, you know, whether it be English or art history or philosophy, you know, these traditionally humanities subjects that might not be known for being very lucrative in terms of the job market. You learn so many technical skills that are so applicable to many different industries. You know, like with philosophy, I learned that um, that kind of rational thinking, that kind of technical writing is just incredibly valued in so many different industries because all industries just involve writing. And so I think being exposed to that in high school and then being able to kind of take that passion and pursue it in university has been super rewarding. Is there anything high schoolers should be focusing on? I think one thing that you know high schoolers can work on in high school is um, contributing in class and being bold enough to speak up in classes. Because when you come into a university environment, it's that times a thousand, you know, there are so many students in a class and even in tutorials, I find that a lot of people are very hesitant to participate. But, you know, when you've practiced kind of being able to articulate your ideas, being bold enough to share those ideas, it really, really does enhance just your learning experience as a whole, you know, being a very active participant in a classroom setting, first of all, makes you positively noticed by the TA, which is never a bad thing. Um, but also it just, it definitely just makes learning a lot more engaging. And I think that's something that everyone can work on um, starting now. What is it like studying philosophy, ethics, society and law and sociology? Um, like I mentioned in my introduction, I am studying philosophy and ethics, society and law and sociology. And so, you know, it means that I have a very interdisciplinary experience in the arts. Um, you know, I'm taking courses on the law, I'm taking courses on like aesthetics and philosophy, you know, I'm taking sociology courses, just such a wide range of things. And I think, you know, this is true for probably the sciences as well, but what I know best is the humanities and social sciences. And it's so great because you're able to take one topic like incarceration, for example, incarceration in Canada, and you're able to view it in a philosophy class from a philosophical perspective. You're able to view it from a sociological perspective that you know, focuses on empirical research. You're able to view it from the perspective of the law and law enforcement. You're able to look at something from many different angles. And that I think is just a huge merit of being in an interdisciplinary program in the arts. Um, it just, yeah, it just enhances your understanding and your perspective of the world. Did anything surprise you during your first year at university? Um, one thing that pleasantly surprised me about university, I think, especially in the arts, was how passionate everyone can be, or a lot of people are, about what they're studying. I think in high school, there's a mixture of people who are, you know, incredibly interested in what they study, but then you're always having to take classes that you just have to take to graduate. And so there might be a little less passion there. But I think what's so great about the arts especially, I feel, is that, you know, people seem to take these programs because of just an innate interest in what they're learning. And so you see a lot more participation. People like my friends and I are talking about class material while we're just, you know, having drinks um, at night. Like it's it, it bleeds into your personal life because it's just so interesting. And I think I didn't expect, you know, um, so many people to be so passionate about what they were learning. And that was definitely something that pleasantly surprised me because, you know, as much as you're bogged down by essays and finals and no one likes those, um, at the end of the day, I feel like the material that we're able to discuss and learn about is just really worth it. Which have been your favorite courses? One of my favorite classes currently is a seminar class it's just broadly called ethics and society, but it focuses on incarceration and specifically about the human experience of people in incarceration. And it takes a very narrative approach as opposed to like a very analytical social science approach. You know, there's a combination of each, but I like that because a lot of these, you know, higher level uh, upper year courses are seminar style and they're only like 20, 25 people in a class. It's structured in a way that there's so much discussion. So, you know, 
and now that it's in Zoom, they they put us into breakout rooms of like three to five people and we're able to just spend 20 minutes talking about a given topic. That kind of narrative structure has been really interesting and exciting for me. What other extracurriculars are you currently pursuing? Other than my position at the Heart House Art Committee, I am also involved as an editor-in-chief of the undergraduate law journal called Intraviras. Um, and so, you know, there is the direct connection of this being a law journal and me wanting to pursue the law. But I think, you know, I can speak on what editor positions and working at a journal is, it, it's super helpful um, in terms of just enhancing your university experience and gaining a lot of experience that is quite related to a lot of the work that um, you're asked to do in your academics and in your future fields. You know, just especially as editor-in-chief, I think just building leadership skills, being organized, being able to manage a team of editors, um, you know, have sticking to a strict timeline, being involved with promotions and graphic design, you know, having a lot of these different roles interchangeably within one role is, I think, a skill that I've learned a lot through this position. Um, I'm also involved with the philosophy course union because, of course, I'm a philosophy major and I'm a secretary at the union as well. And again, like it's just it's a great way to represent undergraduate interests in a department. It's a great way to gain experience talking to staff and professors who lead these programs and being able to voice undergraduate concerns and our opinions about various decisions that the department makes. And so I think, you know, just being able to articulate yourselves in a way that gets your point across, being in these positions where you, you're responsible for representing various voices is just is a useful skill to have in any industry that you enter. How did you find out about the position at the art committee? I got involved with the art committee um, actually just because a friend of mine in first year had been involved with the Heart House Music Committee. And, you know, she posted on her Facebook page, Heart House has so many different committees, you guys should apply. And so, you know, I knew nothing about Heart House. I had gone there because there was a gym there before I didn't know about these committees. And it was literally just through knowing someone who was a part of the music committee that I became involved. And, you know, I think definitely my experiences of being um, an executive member of a club in high school and having those organizational skills was something that allowed me to get the position of secretary because, you know, I was able to display that, you know, I have certain assets, certain experiences that will help me with this position. But overall, I would say, you know, even if you don't have relevant experience, I really communicated my passion for the arts and my passion for being a part of this committee. And I think that's ultimately what shows um, commitment and you know, technical skills are something you can learn along the way. So I think just being really invested in it and involved and interested in the work that a group does is just the most important thing to showcase when you're applying for positions. What is it like combining your studies with volunteering? I think the thing about being a part of any group or any organization is that, of course, you're going to have added responsibilities on top of your schoolwork. But I find that having added responsibilities and, um, for clubs that you're passionate about actually just improves your work ethic for everything else. You know, a lot of people shy away from doing extracurriculars because they want to focus on their academics and they just want to focus on their grades. And, you know, I think that's that can be great. But what I found personally was that having more commitments actually just improves the way that I live my day to day life and the way that I'm able to be more productive, have better work ethic, have better organization skills. And so it's honestly enhanced my academic life as well. What can a university graduate do with a degree like yours? Yeah, so there are a lot of different things that you know, you can do with an arts degree, a philosophy degree that isn't law school, that isn't just grad school. You know, I, I recently attended a career panel with alumni just from my ethics society and law program. And so they, these are students who did exactly the same program as I did. And, you know, of course, there are some lawyers mixed in there, but I was surprised by how many people didn't even go to grad school and have very flourishing careers. You know, you can work in public policy. I know someone who works in like water management because she's really interested in water conservation, you know, especially with something like 
a philosophy degree, for example, but I think it speaks true for any arts degree. You know, like I mentioned earlier, writing is just such an essential part of any job. And, you know, they recognize that philosophy majors have a lot of logical reasoning skills. They're very clear, succinct writers. And so these skills are really transferable to any field, even if you're not constantly doing philosophy. You know, there are so many jobs that require those kinds of critical thinking, critical analysis skills. And those are valued in honestly any industry you can think of. Um, you know, I know someone who also just worked bank, um, you know, after doing an arts degree, after doing a Bachelor of Arts at U of T. And so I would say, honestly, the opportunities are endless. I would not restrict yourself in deciding to go into the arts just because you think that there's no job prospects because there 100% are. What does your career plan look like? So with my arts degree, I have decided to go down a more conventional route um, and, and pursue law school. And, you know, I think my decision to do that, though, wasn't necessarily affected by me wanting to find security in a job. You know, I wasn't set on law school in high school. This was something that I truly developed a passion for through the courses that I took, you know, and it's something that I'm pursuing because I'm genuinely interested in it. I was lucky enough to take a lot of legal philosophy courses and courses that directly talk about principles of law. And those were the the courses that I thrived in and did really well in. And so, you know, I wouldn't necessarily have imagined that for myself coming into university and, and starting a philosophy degree. And so I think it's really important to just explore many different course options because you never know what you're going to find interesting and yeah so you know I'm I'm taking the more conventional route going to law school but I'm doing it because I'm really passionate about it. One piece of advice to a high school student. Piece of advice that I would give to high schoolers is you know as cliche as it is get involved (laughs) and I think you know I've spoken quite extensively about how Um, being a part of various extracurriculars, whether it be in the arts or otherwise, you know, course unions, journals, etc. It truly, truly enhances um, your experience. And I've I've experienced that, you know, back when things were in person, because then you're you're a part of a community of people that you can share experiences with. But especially now in this pandemic where everything has moved online, it's really easy to feel disconnected in university. You know, it's easy to just go in and out of classes and not get engaged with the community at the university. And so, you know, having weekly or monthly meetings to attend, being a part of event planning, you know, attending events by other clubs, you know, attending workshops, all of these things just really make your tuition money worth it (laughs) first of all and also it just it allows you to build connections with people who are like-minded and who share interests with you and you know without having been a part of extracurriculars I think my university experience would have looked a lot more different and I'm really really glad that I'm a part of many different communities where I can share various aspects of my hobbies and interests with all of my cohorts.